The section we're going in is tactics today, obviously. The section that when you think of what you're doing in Football Manager, this is what you're thinking about doing. The maneuvering, the changing of things, the influencing of the actual game on the field in a more impactful way than basically anything else that you are able to do in the game. Welcome back to Football Manager for Beginners. We're going to be talking about tactics today, how all those different levers work, what they do, how effective they are, and when to use them. We're also going to be doing it in a beanie because it's snowing outside and it's kind of cold. We're not, no, we're not doing that. I look like the skater boy that Avril Lavigne was singing to. My head will be cold, but we will get through the tactics today. Tactics are the thing that you think about doing in Football Manager more than anything else. It's what more people that do stuff about Football Manager, including me, talk about or should talk about more than anything else, because it is the most tangible way, the easily perceived most impactful way you can make changes to what's happening on the field right now and outsmart the other person in an immediate here and there moment. Who has the better tactics? This is what we've done. So we're back into the tactics for beginners save. Yay! Now we've been around in this save before. If you haven't watched the save from the beginning, you might want to do that. This is a whole series, it's on a playlist and you can check out all of the different sections or at least the ones that are interesting to you to learn about the game. In the tactics section, you have a bunch of preset options. Now these preset options, I want you to understand, are going to align a few different things for you to try and play basically in this way. They're going to align your basic tactical shape they're going to align the player roles and they're going to align the instructions, the overall team instructions. Those three things are gonna be, get out of here. They're gonna be aligned in order to make you play that style. But if you start changing all of that stuff, none of the presets that you click here, like if I click Tiki Taka and start changing all of the instructions, I'm not inherently going to be playing in a Tiki Taka system. Now this could be a misconception that you think is a stupid one to have, but I had it, so huh, look at you. Smarty pants, okay. But for observation purposes, we'll go with one of the most obvious ones. And when you click on it, it does tell you the instructions that are putting on, which if you're just starting out in the game or you're new to the game, these aren't really going to make a lot of sense to you. But those are all the instructions that are put on. There's this lovely little visual representation, which is essentially what the match engine looks like, but in 3D and something called mentality, which we will talk about last. Then you go to choosing a formation. Now, if you are playing Tiki Taka, not every formation in the world is going to work for you. And if you're playing Catanaccio, which if you have no idea what that means, and let me be honest with you, I don't either, but it's a super defensive style of tactic-ing. Well, if you're doing that, then you can't play, you know, three strikers up at the top. It doesn't make sense, but there is some variability within Tiki Taka with the different types of shapes that we have. And so for the discussion purposes, the most common one in world football right now, football, I said football, or you're not influencing me, shut up. It's Reese. We click confirm and all of a sudden we are in. We're on to the tactical screen. And here I mentioned three things. One is the shape. That's the most obvious one. The second is where the players are aligned. They have player roles. And then there are the instructions, which there are three different sections. There's in possession, in transition, and out of possession. And I want you to stop. I want you to stop right now and go. Because <gasps> it is okay. This is all about to make a lot more sense than you. And then you're going to have a lot of fun on a very fun game. Just breathe again. If that first one didn't help, eat some chocolate. Not too much. But some helps. Unless you're like allergic or something. Could I get sued for that? Like if you're allergic, is that? Wait a second. Don't. Shh. Okay, where do you go next from here? I would highly recommend sticking with a preset tactic at the beginning of your experience. Improvising off of the preset tactic too much can lead to you doing something that actually ends up horrifyingly contradicting itself and making life a lot harder for yourself, which you can definitely assume and understand and appreciate is that all of the preset tactics, they're not gonna be bad. They might not be good and they might not fit your team, but they're not going to be terrible in terms of their balancing and the way that they influence different parts of the field. So start there, and then as you get comfortable, make the changes we're going to talk about. Now it is a long leap to getting your actual team set up. So there's a quick pick section in the top right. We are gonna go ahead and click that. Now we have the best team possible according to the opinion of our fine esteemed staff, which if you watch the staff section, you know that this has to do with judging player ability and tactical knowledge. So good for you. What you are seeing here in your position is the starting point for all of the players that you are interested interacting with. The endpoint in either defense or offense is determined by the role. 
Now, what these roles are, are an assemblage of player instructions. Now, I play the game all the way through for a living, and I don't mess with player instructions beyond roles, except in very rare circumstances when I really want something to do, somebody to do something in particular. So it's not something you need to mess with to be really good and really comfortable with the game. So the inside forward off the left is going to dribble more, cut inside with the ball, take more risks, and cross less often. They have all of these options, and some of them which are blocked out because he's an inside forward, that are available to you that you can tell that player to do if you really start to get comfortable with your tactic. If you ever need to know what something does, and I would recommend doing this, hover over that thing. You hover over something, it will tell you in detail, much more than they can fit in a title, what that does. And if you have the time, I would go through and just read that. Maybe once every day for the first week you're playing the game, and by the end of that week, you'll have a good understanding of not only your player instructions, but the overall team instructions, because it works the same way here, but we'll get to those in a second. So when you look at this layout, you have the starting point of every player, but from a 4-3-3, you can create a ton of offense or play play a ton of defense. There is a ton of fluidity that is left for interpretation outside of just the overall position of the player. I mean, how different is a poacher? Is Chicharito from Lionel Messi, uh, who is playing essentially the same position, but has it set at false nine instead of poacher. This is before we even take the team instructions into account. How do you know if that role is the right one for the player? Well, when we were looking at the players, you know that you have role and duty highlights for you to guide you to the most important attributes that you are looking for. And if you ever forget, because I literally do all the time, which color is better, click on advanced forward and the things highlighted in green, like Finishing is obviously going to be tremendously important for advanced forward, while the things highlighted in blue are important, but not not quite as much so. So if we look at a Trek Artista, you need passing, vision, technique, dribbling, first touch, but finishing is not necessarily as important because they are not always the primary goal scorer, but they do need to have a high level of intelligence and some ability to physically separate, whether it's agility or acceleration. And you can go through and look at all of the players in your squad at the positions that they are fully comfortable comfortable or accomplished at, which would be either dark green or there we go. That's the color you're looking for. That's like tier two. This is tier three. That's tier four. If it's red, they really can't do it yet, but they're on the way. You can take the time to look at your team that way. Or if you have a trustworthy staff member, you go to team report and team depth chart and the current alignment of your players will present a literal depth chart at each position. Now they can reuse players like a Demi's in both central midfield spots in this case. Well, that's just something to keep in mind. So you don't think you have two great midfielders when you only actually have one. Read the names, kids. But that's how you're going to be able to take stock of your tactic. What are some rules of thumb to start with? Some things that people that are beginning at the game tend to make mistakes at and can torpedo them as they start to tweak with tactics. Number one, you should always have one or two players that really have to be considered the main goal scorers in a tactic. I'm talking about somebody that is on the front line that is on attack. There are three phases to the game. There are primary defensive players, there are primary supporting players, and then there are primary goal scorers. I see far too often people align teams without somebody that is a primary goal scorer whose job is actually to go out and score goals. Maybe it's just the Tiki Taka generation or what have you, but that is definitely some an area where a lot of people can shoot themselves in the foot. Now, an advance forward in this situation would be perhaps too separated from the rest of the team because they're attached to the back line the whole time and not doing anything, but a deep lying forward on attack, you can see the slight difference that's created between the two. We have takes more risk, holds ball up, moves into channels, takes more risk, holds ball up and moves into the channels. But now their mentality, which you can see at the top of the player screen, is actually going to be higher at very attacking. So nice. We need somebody that's out there to score goals, but you also can't go and put everybody on attack because what I was initially told when learning the game, this is number two, did I say two? Two! You cannot put everybody on attack because when you have the ball, people that are on attack are gonna have the mentality to get forward more aggressively. This means if your entire midfield, both of your fullbacks and everybody's missling forward on attack, you are going to get caught with your pants down 100% of the time. Support can do plenty of damage. Now, I would recommend having somebody on the front line on attack, obviously. That was tip number one. But you do not need, I wouldn't say more than this, in this current tactic to be able to score a lot of goals if you've got the right players. It is a delicate 
combination between where their starting position is, what their player instructions are, and then how f aggressive you're telling them to be. Each player has their own mentality, and if they're all set to attack and your overall team mentality is pretty high too, they're gonna be gunning forward. When I started playing the game, I was told that this formation that you're looking at at the beginning is what you start with, and then your roles and mentality on the players are what your formation ends up being on attack. Like a wingback on attack will get to the end line. It won't take them that long to really get there. And if you have both your guys up there all the time, you're kind of screwed. You can switch it during a game. I've seen some people do that. It's smart, but be careful. I also don't ascribe to that anymore because I, you know, like I said, it's the starting points, but that's where we are. And then my third little tip, I would not have two playmakers uh, on the same line. There's a lot of conceptions and misconceptions about playmakers, which would be deep lying, roll, uh, roaming, roll, 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 roll playing playmaker. That's not it. And advanced playmaker. Those three, I would not have them on the same line. Now, an advanced playmaker on attack, they shoot less off, dribble more, they're taking more risks, they're going forward. A deep lying playmaker on support holds the position. And so you end up with two playmakers at different phases of the game. You've got you know, the point guard, basketball, Basketball analogy works well here, right? And then the other person that's up there mixing the drink, and this guy's holding the position. Playmakers are ball dominant players. Other people look for them because of their player instructions. They are trying to pick the ball up and then do something with it, not pick it up and get rid of it. I've used tactics plenty of times without a playmaker in the team, and life is always fine. Just be careful with overdoing it. Now for instructions. You can do a million different things in instructions, and where you put your instructions will completely and entirely change the way that your tactic plays. Now in a ticky talk, a much shorter passing, much lower tempo, that's it. Uh, but if you we wanted to go, let's throw it back to Norway in the 90s, right? We can up the tempo, up the directness of the passing, and without changing anything else in here, have completely changed the way the tactic is going to play. There are a lot lot of buttons in the instructions and most of them you are not going to use but there are a few ones uh, that I want to make sure you are aware exist and then explain the viability of a few like tempo. We'll start with tempo because tempo is not necessarily just like pepping your step moving around faster. Tempo is how aggressively you force the ball up the field which obviously can be a good thing and a bad thing but it's not what I always thought of is just how fast they're moving around and running around. It's how aggressively the player is going to receive the ball and look to go forward, which means Tiki Tockets on very low. So when they receive the ball, they leave all their options open 100%. When it's on high, they pick the ball up and go, okay, we're going. Uh, and when it's on extremely high, they're the road runner. Next thing I want to bring your attention to is there's this different crossing ability, which uh, you can experiment with. You hover over each one and it tells you why you might want to use it. I usually leave it on mixed, but it's an easy button to miss and it can really help you get the most goals out of a striker that's tall and slow or short and fast. And then there's overlaps as well in possession. Keep in mind that your fullback will overlap whether you tell them to or not. If they're a wingback on support, a fullback on attack, anything past that, they're going to overlap fairly often. Telling them to overlap is telling them to look for the overlap. That can slow down an attack that you want to move quickly. And if you like your winger more than you like your fullback, you're really, you're, you're hamstringing the guy. If you tell him to slow down up there and wait. And then on the in transition section, there is actually a drop down here. So if you want to distribute not just to a certain area of the field, but to a specific player, because say you have two fullbacks, one you trust with the ball and one you don't, you can select that specific player in this drop down. And then when you go back to the area drop down, then all of a sudden all of your options are open here. Again, you can click back to it and life is easy. Of course, your goalkeeper will not always do that. That is because no matter what you do tactically, your player will not always do that unless they have 20 teamwork. That is an attribute. It's right here. It affects their ability to work in the team and listen to instructions. As long as you're on good moral terms with the player, moral, morale terms with the player, uh, they will listen to you as well as their teamwork allows. This means in lower league management, they're gonna listen to you less. So the position of the players in the tactic, the overall shape is more important than what you're telling them. And the higher levels, what you're telling them becomes more and more important the higher the teamwork gets which makes teamwork pretty important for guys like center backs and fullbacks. But a guy like a striker that you kind of just want running around scoring goals, it becomes less important. But just remember that the next time you're screaming at your computer because you said low crosses and somebody sailed one. They're either
either bad or they weren't listening to you and everything affects everything in football manager so it's probably a nice little bit of both the last section on the instructions we have you're out of possession this is your higher lines now i would highly recommend staying on high pressing in most games that you are playing because it just works in football manager but unlike past years in football manager 21 and i'm assuming on into the future it makes your team more tired faster so if you play a super congested schedule experiment with lower pressing the lines very important this is bad this is also bad uh, for a lot of obvious reasons i'm not going to go into but thinking that you've cracked the case by going much higher at the back and much lower at the front means you need a very specific set of players to be doing that and if you're not confident that you have a very specific set of incredibly intelligent fast center backs uh, and defenders and i don't even know what you're attempting to accomplish by setting your front line there maybe ultra direct drawing their back line forward i'm sure i could make this work if i tinkered with it long enough but typically you're going to want to stay relatively balanced now there is a reason that you might want to go this draw their back line forward more and give you more space to pass into and then maybe you want to go with this because you trust your defense a little more and you want to be able to transition back to front a little more effectively or maybe they're beating you with long balls over the top and you want to meet those back line players that are passing faster that is a good justification for this lines are one of the most finicky often adjusted things in football manager tactics you will never feel comfortable with them but that's the basic idea and your mentality is basically only there to affect the individual player mentalities of everybody on the field so if we go to orsic and we look at his player mentality it's on very attacking as an inside forward on support on positive uh, but if we go to balanced inside forward on support on positive it now goes down to attacking as for what attacking does it just affects their mindset and movement that player is looking to accomplish that goal because of their position their role and then your overall team mentality so of course overall team mentality is tremendously important there's a massive difference between cautious and balanced and positive and balanced it's dipping your toe in one direction or the other it will change the mentality of almost everybody in the team when you make that change in either direction so start on balance how's the game going you have control or do you not you can switch that direction it's probably the smartest way to play it and i should do that more it's a bit long-winded but you have to notice i'm still not even close to explaining everything and tactics is not something you'll feel comfortable with changing everything in ever really i i still don't i don't use things like roaming playmakers and i hate whipped crosses i've never been able to get them to work but this is kind of like in real life every manager has their own preferences every manager has their own things that they're comfortable with and there are a lot of ways to win and you will find your stride start in the preset start tweaking things as you get rolling and uh happy managing see you on the next football manager for beginners finger guns